Senator Rosen, uh, you are recognized uh, for your questions. Well, thank you, Chair Peters. And uh, of course, I see a uh, uh, ranking member Portman there, and I want to uh, thank the witnesses for their insights today. Uh, you know, all of this is critical, and I, I'm worried about our critical services for veterans. So, uh, Ms. Simmons, in your testimony, you referenced the VA's Undersecretary for Health, a position that has not had a Senate confirmed leader since 2017. This position leads the Veterans Health Administration, which is the country's largest integrated health system. It serves 9 million enrolled, enrolled veterans each and every year with more than 1,200 sites and an annual budget of $61 billion. Nevada is home to over 225,000 veterans, so I'm deeply concerned that the VA had to stand up a commission last year just to identify candidates to lead and manage the VHA. So, Ms. Simmons, what can Congress do to ensure that positions like these that aren't as high as cabinet level, but still oversee critically important government services, including for our veterans, that, well, that they just don't go without permanent leaders for years at a time? This really hurts our country. Thank you, Senator, for that question. And we are uh, very much in favor of trying to find creative ways to fill these positions that are truly management in nature and require high levels of professional and technical expertise and are really apolitical. And I think service to our veterans is certainly a place where we can do more to think about how to provide continuity of leadership and to just think about the positions differently. So one idea is to change the norm or think differently about whether these positions actually turn over with the change in administrations. Inspectors general are positions that are Senate confirmed, but by tradition, they're not expected to turn over when a new administration comes in. So there's a potential to think differently about some of these management jobs and adopt that same kind of norm or tradition um, of not having them turn over. Another suggestion would be to think about providing a, a set term, a longer term with professional qualifications so that you have greater assurance that someone stepping into the role would understand that they had a runway that went beyond one administration and that they were there uh, for their professional expertise and you could even build performance measures around that, that position. Another thing we think is important is to think about having performance plans for political appointees. This is something I think would speak to Senator Portman's concern about the quality of nominees. We strongly feel that people in these important positions need to be qualified leaders. They should be developed and trained as leaders. They should be held accountable for their performance and being clear what good performance looks like and setting some um, terms and, and extended terms would allow them to have more continuity in some of these key positions, especially in areas as apolitical and important as service to our veterans. Well, that's uh, great. I think we also have to be sure that we identify how we identify those quality candidates, get them into the pipeline, implementing some of the things you're thinking of and others is, uh, is a good thing. Um, I'd also like to talk a little bit about regional appointments because last week, President Biden announced 13 regional appointments for FEMA, the EPA, the Department of Agriculture, including the Nevada State Executive Director for the Farm Service Agency. The nominee, Janice Colvett, well, she has experience as a career federal employee working on federal farm programs as a cattle rancher in Elko, Nevada. Um, she's, she's a Nevadan. And so regional appointments like these are just so important, especially in Western states where the local economy, industry, and climate challenges are not always familiar to federal government workers here in Washington, D.C. So again, Ms. Simmons, I understand these regional appointments aren't subject to Senate confirmation. So why, why is it that it can take so long to fill these critical roles in a new administration? And what effect does the Senate confirmation process in general have on these appointments, even when it's not uh, required for a particular position? Thank you for that question. And this speaks to something that Professor O'Connell raised, which is the value of reaching outside of Washington for candidates and filling these important positions with people who bring diverse perspectives from around the country and can really um, bring their personal expertise and experience to bear in service to the public. 
when there are so many positions subject to Senate confirmation, it's almost essential that a very small office of presidential personnel devotes their attention there. And that tends to take up a lot of the time that could be spent sourcing candidates for some of these more regional positions, positions not subject to Senate confirmation. It's also true sometimes that some of these regional positions or, or other positions um, that are not Senate confirmed are not filled until the Senate confirmed position is filled above it. So that can also contribute. Um, and finally, I, I don't have specific knowledge of this situation at USDA, but when um, Congress is operating under, excuse me, when the government's operating under a continuing resolution, there also might be financial reasons why they're not able to fill particular positions um, that they need to fill until full year appropriations are passed. So those are just a, a few of the comments and I would invite my other panelists to chime in. Yeah, because it's really, um, government services really suffer in our regional areas when these positions aren't filled. Professor O'Connell, would you like to uh, comment on this as well, please? Thank you, Senator. I agree with Ms. Simmons from the partnership uh, about the various reasons. I would just add with regard to the Presidential Personnel Office um, is that we've seen a lot of turnover in PPO uh, across Democratic and Republican administrations. Um, in President Obama's administration, uh, for example, uh, the head of PPO, while trying to fill all these plum jobs uh, across federal agencies, uh, decided that he wanted to take a plum job uh, as ambassador uh, to South Africa, and so uh, was gone uh, from the presidential personnel office within six months uh, of the start of that administration. And for President Biden, um, the first director of presidential personnel has also left. So I think it's also important for uh, Republicans and Democrats, and there was turnover in PPO as well in the Trump administration, to have experienced people in presidential personnel, to have the staff, um, and then have uh, the various computer systems, the online systems, to help process more quickly uh, people both for Senate confirmed positions and then for these other uh, political jobs. Thank you. I appreciate that. I see my time's expired. I just think we really have to also address the Federal Vacancies Reform Act, its relationship to specific agency specific succession schemes. We have a lot to do here. Uh, people need services and uh, appreciate everyone for being here. Thank you, Mr. Chair.